Hello YouTubers, what we're going to do today is we're going to revisit our direct to film hack. So we did the hack with sublimation printer where we print on the film and we use the powder and we press to get the images onto 100% cotton. Today we're going to do it with um, inkjet printer. This is an inkjet, $65 cheap HP printer <laughs> did this. I was honestly amazed. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to set this up and print this and we're going to make one. And then I'm going to wash it and dry it and we're going to see how it does. And then I'm going to compare an honest to God um, direct to film t-shirt, a direct to film sublimation t-shirt, and a direct to film inkjet shirt and see how they all compared. So let's get going. All right. So these are the same supplies I used in the other video. Um, this is my film. It is A4 um, direct to film film. I guess is what its official name is and you just the big thing with it is you want to keep track of which side is your print side and which side is not they won't print on both sides so um, don't like take them all out of the paper or keep track of this if you get a different brand you have a print side and a non print side and pretty much they're indistinguishable if you just look at them so that's the big thing to know with it this is actually an a4 piece of paper so it's a little bit smaller than eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. The other cool thing I'm kind of looking forward to with this hack, I hope it washes well, is if you have a bigger printer, like I have a wide format Canon, you would be able to print 12 by 12, which would be substantially cheaper than direct to film printer, a sublimation printer, any other traditional wide format printing, because they're normally very expensive. So I have um, this film and then this powder, it's the same powder I had last time. So it's a powder, and then um, I have a little, uh, this is a plastic container. You're going to need to pour your powder into a container. So this is the one I've been using. And these are all just the same supplies I had the last time we did this. So I still have all of this powder left over. Um, I still have quite a number of sheets of film left over. Um, I'll put links down below, if I didn't say that already, to the specific brands that I have. I cannot speak for any other brand. These are the only two that I have tried. Um, I did find this funny. When I originally bought this, the transfer film was $18 and the powder was $21. When I redid this for um, the sublimation video itself, they were $32 and $40 for them. I just typed them in to go, the transfer film is now $10 and this was $16. So um, prices seem to vary a lot depending on, I have no idea what, they just seem to vary a lot. So I thought this was funny. So I'm doing test prints on 100% cotton tea towel. I think it's from Target, um, but it is 100% cotton and we're just test printing on it. And then this is Blooper. I drew him, he's the mascot for the Braves and I just print him and test him because he's got multiple colors and he's pretty big. So this is one that turned out pretty good. He does have some splotches in it, and but he's pretty good. The one thing I wanted to let you know is the only difference between that Blooper and this Blooper was this one had to sit and wait for the heat press to warm up. So it sat and it dried out for a little bit and you can see how bad this print looks. So you need to keep the train moving. Um, you need to print powder and press pretty quickly. So the heat press needs to be on when you're printing. You need to keep this moving. Um, don't let it sit and dry because it does look bad. Also your, your film here, um, don't let any wrinkles or creases get into it because then it will obviously have issues dispersing your ink correctly. So it needs to be flat and without any ridges. Um, also, double check if they somehow send it to you in a box and it gets crumpled or anything like that. It would need to be sent back. You can't use it. So let's go print. Now we are in Silhouette Studio and we're going to print from this program. You can print from any program that you want to. You can print from Word. You can print from anything. Um, all you need to do is flip him horizontally because we're going to mirror him. We're going to flip him. Other than that, that was pretty much it. And we're going to go file and print. Now I have not, um, I haven't played with any of the settings partially because we were using the cheapest printer that I own and I don't have any settings really to play with. Um, you could try if you really wanted to do this and this worked out really well for you, you could play around with glossy settings versus not because that affects how much ink is put down, but I'm not going to do that right now. We're just printing as we normally would. 
I have just put the film in here with no problem. It's fed by itself with no need to tape it to anything. It is just film fed right through. Now we're gonna go powder. Alrighty, so it is printed. Ooh. Mine does have lines on it. Um, it has not shown up in any of the prints yet. I am just going to pour my powder over. And I obviously have my heat press already on. And then you're just going to roll it a little bit to make sure you've got everything covered. There we go. And then I just pour this back into my bag. You can reuse this a million billion times. Now we are over the heat press. Heat press is set for 385 for 40 seconds. And then this is our little thing. So we're gonna flip them. So our film side is up. I have pre-pressed this and I have a pressing pillow underneath it. I use butcher paper mostly because it makes me feel better. I don't actually really know if it's necessary or if it just makes me feel better. So 385 for 40 seconds. Now, you're going to move it off your heat press and onto a cold surface. This is a cold peel. So if you peel it when it's hot, it's just gonna come right off. So I just move it to my countertop and wait until it's cold to the touch. All right, so we're cold to the touch. You're going to peel. Be amazed. Okay, so there are a couple lines in this. And that is what it looks like. You can, if you want to look very closely, there are some lines. It has like a plasticky feel. I don't know how to explain it. It's not quite like a screen print. It feels kind of like plastic. Um, and the other ones that I have done, they, when they wash, they softened up. But for right now, it has a plasticky kind of feel. And there's a bit of a smell. Not a bad smell, but a smell. But yeah, if you want to be two inches from the from the design, you can see the lines. Back here, you can't really see it. So I'm back at the heat press. So um, in traditional directive film, you press and you wait for it to get cold and then you peel it and then you press it again. So we're gonna press it again at 385 for 10 seconds. All right, so that is what our piece of film looks like from the back. You can see almost all of the colors off of it. When we have that blooper that dried, you can see how much color is left on here. So. If this is what you're getting, it's too dry when you're going to press it and you need to move faster. So I'm gonna wash this and dry this and we're gonna come back and see how he does. Alrighty, so we are back and we have washed and we have dried once um, on cold water, regular dry. And as you can see, this really, really faded. Um, our little hedgehog, this is gonna be in the teaser video. You can see. Now, you might get away with A-washing if you do a really bright, bold design like our little radish here. Um, anything lighter, really, you're going to struggle to see. I'm kind of bummed. I wish this had held up better. But if you had a make it work moment, if you needed a shirt and you needed a shirt right now, yeah, it'll work. Um, but realistically, this would be for like a one-time wear kind of thing for a weekend or something like that. Um, you're desperate and you need something. This will work but it's not going to do well once you wash it and dry it. All right, so here are our bloopers. This is a direct-to-film blooper. This is a sublimation hack direct-to-film blooper. And then this is our inkjet blooper we just made. I wanted to show you all so you could compare them. Direct-to-film is what you're going to need to do if you're going to want to sell these. This is the, the tried and true process. The other nice thing about them is they're expected to last the lifetime of the shirt and they can go on any kind and color of shirt. So this blooper is on a very dark gray shirt. You can also, this is something I designed and it's on a black shirt. All you have to do is press, peel, and you press again. Um, they're wonderful. I do not have one of these printers. I have no plans to buy one of these printers anytime soon. Um, my local vinyl shop will print them for me. I can send them the P PNG file, little print. I go pick up and I'm ready to press. So. I'm a big fan. This is our sublimation blooper. He's actually not a bad um, 
a bad kind of in between. He, to me, would be good for a season. If you needed a shirt for like a soccer season where you had like you were like a specific number and you just needed it for maybe four months, I think this is a good in between. Um, it will survive several washings and it actually looks fairly good. Um, and it can go on cotton, but it can also, it has to go on light colored cotton. So white, things like that. So he's kind of your in-between. Um, that, like I said before, if you had to make it work, he would make it work. He doesn't look that bad, but by no means would I sell that. Would I feel comfortable selling that? The same with this blooper. I wouldn't feel comfortable selling that. It is going to deteriorate and break down after more washings. So if you're going to sell this, if you're going to make for yourself, I would do this one. If you just need to make it work, I would go. He's not a bad idea. And I did want to show you this real quick. This was the radish we made in the sublimation direct to film hack video. And you can see he's been washed and dried four times now. Um, I did a short on him too, but um, I just wanted to show you since we were talking about it. Um, you can see some of the issues here. I washed him in hot water the last time. It really, I think, caused a lot of this. So always cold water. But realistically, he doesn't look bad for four washes. Like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable selling this. I would feel really upset if I had paid money for this and then this starts happening to it. So I wouldn't sell this, but I do think it's a pretty pretty cool option to have, especially if you only have a cotton shirt and you need a shirt. So that's that one. And those are all of our bloopers again. Um, but I hope this helps. At least you have your options, you know what they look like, you know the pitfalls. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer the best I can. Please like, subscribe, follow, and all of that jazz for more crafty content. Thank you so much.